So I've had my Hubitat for about a year now. It's just, uh, I think 11 months. It's getting close to a year. And here are the thoughts. Here's what I learned uh, that'll help you decide if Hubitat is right for you. You can tell by the layers of dust that uh, it's been a pretty reliable device for me and I haven't had to touch it. If you're trying to decide if this is the right device for you, I'll go over my list of pros and cons, things I like and dislike about it, or things that I think other people might care about. First thing I'd like to talk about is a pro which is reliable. This device has been very, very reliable with the exception of one day where some of the Zigbee device drivers updated overnight and uh, it ended up turning on and off my bedroom lights. It was an easy fix at the time, I just turned the switch off and dealt with it in the morning. But uh, a little bit of a rude awakening having your lights strobe for you. Other than that, everything has been rock solid. I have a bunch of Wi-Fi stuff connected to it. I've got thermostats that are Zigbee and Wi-Fi, uh, a whole ton of switches. Everything has worked flawlessly. Much more reliable than the old school timers. So as far as reliability is concerned, this device definitely gets a point there. One of the cons of this device I would definitely have to say is the dashboard. The default Hubitat dashboard is just plain ugly. I mean, that's all there is to it. It is ugly. The good news is you can customize this dashboard to make it whatever you want. I've gone with a very generic flat black, gray, white colors on my dashboard and I'm very happy with it now. I've also set it up to auto resize so it also looks great on my mobile device. And this is primarily where I end up using this thing anyway. So that is, uh, Probably about the only con. Ah, I've got two cons for you. That's one of the only two cons uh, of this device. The default dashboard is gonna require some tweaking to get this thing to the point where you're happy with it, I think. Another huge perk of the Hubitat device is the community. If there's a device that you find and you need a driver, chances are somebody else has already made a driver or ported one over from Samsung SmartThings and it's pretty easy to just copy the driver, paste it in and ta-da, now your device works. Updates for this hub is another huge positive. Very frequently, I'd say probably about every two or three weeks, there's a new update available for the hub to download. Uh, installation is a snap. You just click on the update button and everything just continues on resuming as normal. All of the updates for me have been positive ones. They've added features, made automations easier to use or rules in the case of running the automations have become easier with every passing update as well. So it, the device just keeps on getting better which is a great positive. Automations for this device are not cloud-based either. It means you don't need an active internet connection. There's no fancy logins, nothing for this thing to work. All you gotta do is connect the device. Once the device is connected, you build in whatever automation you want, and that's it. The device works. As long as your device is plugged in and your switch is powered up, the automations are reliable and they work. And that's really all I need them to do. I just need them to be reliable and work. If I click a button and uh, want my lights to turn on and off, great. The only downside of that being is if your internet connection is down, you will need to be connected to the local area network for those automations to work. Uh, running your smartphone uh, remotely is definitely going to be down when the internet connection is down, but I think that kind of goes without saying. Another big plus is all of my devices that are connected to the Habitat and connected to my device are now remote through the app. I can click on and select any of my devices anytime I want and control them on the app. So that's a huge plus for me. So if you're away from home and you wanna to connect to your devices, it's no big deal to connect up to your device and uh, change or turn switches and stuff on and off uh, at any given point in time as well. Automations are definitely a huge plus for this device. Now, although rules might be a little bit cumbersome, and a little tricky to figure out at first, once you have it figured out, it's pretty limitless what you can do. And you're not limited to just uh, automations based on a single switch or device. You can set motion from a Wi-Fi device. 
uh, to control uh, a Zigbee plug or a Z-Wave switch or whatever the case is. You can set it up based on local time, sunrise, sunset. There's a lot of built-in functions to this thing that you can pretty much set up any automation I think that you can think of. It's pretty much the world is your oyster here. Automate whatever you want. Now this device also supports Zigbee, Z-Wave, and Wi-Fi devices. So whatever you want to run or whatever switches you want to buy, I haven't found anything that I can't connect to this thing yet. Some might require custom drivers for you to be able to connect to this device, but uh, I mean the elevation is pretty good right out of the box for being compatible with a bunch of different devices. It's also nice if you're not sure if there's compatibility for your device, you can easily click on the devices tab inside your Hubitat dashboard, scroll through and you might very easily just find a built-in driver already set up inside the Hubitat at elevation. Now I kind of touched on this earlier, but uh, adding custom drivers, that's a huge plus for me. Anytime you have an open source community actively building codes, and there's clearly people that are more gifted with adding code than I am, but this kind of sets you up for being able to find a device that's in high demand, or maybe some devices that are a little bit more customizable or a little more custom. Uh, for instance, they recently just installed a Zigbee garage door opener, and that device driver is entirely based off of something that the community has put together. So being able to add these custom devices to Hubitat and then automate them and build them in with everything else is a huge plus. The cost of this unit is absolutely cheap. Uh, for what you get, it is dirt cheap. I think they're 110 bucks right now on Amazon for a Hubitat. If you're starting with home automation, I mean for a robust platform that this is, uh, in my opinion, it's probably the best one out there right now. Now I haven't used Home Assistant and there's probably gonna be 50 comments below ripping my ear off about Home Assistant. Yes, you can do more with Home Assistant, but I think Home Assistant, just from what I've looked into, requires more work than Habitat to get going. And not everybody is a tech savvy user. So I think it's a good blend of options of what you can do and for the cost and how it is to set up, it's a pretty good mix. I think it's very fair unit. Now maybe if there's something more advanced I wanted to get into, I might need a home assistant, but as of right now, the Hubitat elevation, I can't think of anything that this device can't do for me or that I won't be able to do in the future. So I'm very happy with that. Bang for your buck, it's, it's way up there. Another absolutely big plus for me is the power loss recovery. If your power goes out, flickers, brownouts, whatever the heck uh, happens, we've had several of them since I've got this device installed and every time it's come right back, automations are running and I've had no issues there. And last but not least, I think the uh, probably the biggest con that I would say for people that are looking at getting the Hubitat elevation is going to be the initial setup. It can seem a little bit daunting. I didn't find that whole experience a little user friendly. I did put a guide uh, on the channel. You can check that out and hopefully that it helps other people get started. But adding your first device is probably the most complicated. Once you've got kind of the workflow of how they want you to add devices figured out with Hubitat, you're good to go for there but it isn't as straightforward and easy as maybe it could be that being said uh, because they're always updating this device and making it better it's come a long way from when I bought this thing a year ago to where it is now adding rules or changing rules changing conditions which is essentially the automations of this device has become uh, way easier and it's much better. It's much more user friendly than what it used to be. Uh, in the past, if you'd click a back button when you were building a, a ruler and automation, you could very easily uh, come up with a broken condition that you just wouldn't be able to fix unless you deleted the rule and started over. That's no longer the case. They've kind of closed that loophole up and it's become a lot more fail safe. If you are starting out with this device, just if you're comparing it to kind of some of the other home automations like SmartThings or the Apple, it's going to be a little bit tougher to set up initially but you're going to be leaps and bounds ahead in 
a month's time. For me, a little befuddled with this device for probably about a day or two. And then once I figured out the workflow of the way they wanted me to set this device up, it didn't take me more than a couple of days and I had all my automations moved over from SmartThings and WebCore to Hubitat. So don't let that scare you. Just know it's gonna be something you're probably gonna have a little bit of a struggle with. But like I said, follow the link up above or follow the video and I'll do my best to kind of help you guide you through that process. So overall, where are we at with this thing now? I still completely love it. If something happened to this hub, it got smashed or uh, whatever, broken for whatever reason, I would definitely pick up another one right away and I would set it right back up. Being able to back up this device as well, it would make it just a non-event. I do have a, a backup that you can do right on the uh, Hubitat itself. Save that file to a Google Drive or wherever you want. So if anything does happen to this thing, it's as simple as putting another device in there, updating the firmware, restoring the backup, and just like that, everything is back up and running. If I had my choice, of any home automations and uh, picking any device it's still the habitat for me i think it's uh it's the best of uh, every world so far My overall experience with this, this device has been very favorable. From going through uh, just trying to automate a furnace fan to circulate air in my house to the amount of automations I've got running on this thing now. My grow room is completely automated with Habitat. Uh, I've got Zigbee switches and stuff all over the place. Instead of running uh, furnace fan timers or uh, a schedule on my furnace, uh, Habitat now does that for me based on people actually being inside the house. There's a lot of little great things that I've done with this and I'm just so happy with this device I would buy one again in a heartbeat considering that uh, I think I paid double and then some for it the price has come down it's a fair price if you're on the fence about it I give this device a, a really solid thumbs up and I don't think there's uh, many people that will struggle with setting this thing up more than uh, a little bit at the start and then I think there's a lot of people that would benefit from having the automation set up in their home just be warned that once you start with this it's not an easy turn off uh, <laughs> to get away from home automation it's very very helpful and i won't be going back to not having it anytime soon